Matthew LeMay. I am a PhD candidate in the Department of Chemical and Materials Engineering. And I'm going to talk today about atomic layer deposition of transition metal oxide catalysts for zincar batteries. Did you know that the state of California actually produces more renewable energy than needs? It's true. During the middle of the day, when the peak solar production, they actually have to shut down power plants because there's just too much power for the grid. But, but why is that? Well, because of something called the duck curve. It looks a little bit like a duck, a silver of ducks, they call it the duck curve. Uh, the idea is that in the morning, when the sun is shining and people are going to work, there's a balance of power production and power demand. In the afternoon, though, people are at work, they're not using a lot of power, but the sun is still shining, very bright. So here is where we have to scale down solar production, shut down some plants, and waste energy, essentially. Now, in the evening, People will come home from work, they turn on the stove, they turn on the lights, they're using power, but the sun has stopped shining at this point. So now to meet the energy demand, we have to turn on fossil fuel burning generators, right? So CO2 production. But what if we could take the excess in the afternoon that we wasted and use it in the evening? That's exactly what grid scale energy storage is all about. We have a battery system connected to the grid that during solar production, we can power our homes, but any excess can go to this battery. And then during the evening, when we don't have the, solar, the sun anymore, we can still deplete that battery and use that power to avoid fossil fuel burning. Now, there's many technologies for grid scale energy storage, but batteries are pretty well known for energy storage. And actually right now, lithium ion batteries are being used for grid scale energy storage, um, but they present a fire hazard. There's actually a case in Australia of a fire, uh, fire in one of the plants. Now, my research is focused on zinc air batteries. Uh, they're safer. They don't have flammable components. Um, they use zinc metal and oxygen in the air. So it's called air. Um, they also use more abundant and low cost materials. The zinc uh, is more accessible than lithium uh, and oxygen is everywhere. Um, it also has a higher energy density. So that means more kilowatt hours per battery. Uh, so less batteries to get the same amount of energy as compared to lithium ion. And that's because we don't store the oxygen. The oxygen is just in the air. So we store the zinc so we can have more kilograms, or so less kilograms, but more kilowatt hours. Now, why aren't we using zinc air batteries now? Well, because the reactions that occur here on the cathode with the air side are slow. This, this and this, the discharge and the charge, they're slow. They got poor efficiency. So we have some battery losses. So to compensate, we will use catalysts. And current catalysts that are being used are made of rare metals like platinum and ruthenium, things that are used in jewelry. They're expensive, not feasible for wide scale use. My research is focused on using more abundant materials like iron or manganese. More specifically, they're oxide. So iron oxide and manganese oxide. Now manganese oxide is actually used right now in disposable alkaline batteries you know, as a cathode material. So we're familiar with that material. Iron oxide is just rust. So these two are pretty abundant and well known. Now, to create catalysts, my research is looking at atomic layer deposition, or ALD for short, to make these catalyst layers. Now, this, this technique was devised in the semiconductor industry for thin conformal coatings on microchips, but it also works for coating on the air electrode in the zinc air battery. I can get very high surface area coatings on the high surface area air electrode, and I can maintain the air channels, the porosity needed. So, for example, some methods might just coat the surface with catalyst, it just kind of blocks whatever, uh, and they don't have very high surface area. Also, they can kind of block the porosity, so you don't have very good airflow. Now with ALG, I can get very thin layer that goes around all the edges and corners of my material to give me a high surface area catalyst. Higher surface area, usually it's better catalyst, better performance. But also those air channels are still open for air in and out of the cell, which is needed for good battery performance. Now research results that I've gone um, show through x-ray uh, mapping that I can get iron, manganese, and oxygen overlapping. So I actually have a mixed iron, manganese, oxide. So it's not just one or the other, but both. And together I can get a beneficial effect of being a better catalyst. And also it's very conformal, very thin film that coats. So this is the carbon particles of, a, of a, an electrode. You can see there's a thin coating of iron, of manganese, and oxygen. So it's very good. Just like I showed the last slide, it'll keep porosity. So just as an overall, with lower cost catalysts, we can get more accessible zinc batteries. That will help us get grid scale energy storage and facilitate renewable energy in the grid for a clean grid. Think of all the electric cars in the next 50 years or so. 
We're gonna need a lot of energy from the grid. And if we can make that green energy, electric vehicles can also be green. Thank you.